Hello, and welcome to Rhyme Entertainment Showcase with your hosts, Rita and Mel. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Rhyme Entertainment Showcase. Today, we have our special guest. Now, when you tuned in last time into our last episode, you may have seen the trailer for the program. Today, we are giving a warm welcome to Anthony Spina, who is the writer, director, and producer of the program. Welcome. welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so just tell us about how you got started in the film industry. Um, how did I get started in the film industry? Well, it was it was a bit of a, a bit of a strange ride, to be perfectly honest, because I started off going to university and doing motion graphics, and it wasn't when I was there. Uh, one of my lecturers turned around and said, "You know what? you you should maybe consider changing courses because you're more interested in the story aspect. That's that's where your you know interests lie. That's where your talents lie." And uh, fast forward a couple of years, that's pretty much exactly what I, I did. I focused on that and I started, um, I went and applied for loads of different runners jobs and, and stuff like that in different production companies, worked for free for a whole bunch of them, worked very, very hard and yeah, sort of worked my way up until I got to the point where it's like, right, I think I'm going to give this a try on my own. And that was it really. Brilliant. So, I mean, kind of going back, like you mentioned that uh, previously to us that, you know, as a child, you loved films. And so what was the point of where you were saying, right, I really want to kind of go into either the story side of it? What was your influence behind it? Yeah. So, I mean, when I was a kid, I always loved films. I, I, any sort of storytelling was fantastic for me. And I loved the uh, reading books and comic books and stuff like that. And I don't know, really. It's a bit weird, but it's sort of like, I, I don't know exactly when it clicked, but I remember thinking, I think, it, you know what, actually, the first one that I can think of is when I was reading a comic book and it got to the end and I started to imagine in my head what could come after. Yeah. And I was, I was then picturing lots of different, different scenarios and stories for that character and where it might go and who they might meet and what they might get up to and stuff like that. And... Yeah, and I just, uh, I guess it, it, it kind of took hold of me and um, and went from there. Yeah, yeah. So it was almost like um, you discovered kind of like that world of imagination and putting pen to paper and thinking, you know what, I'm going to take it somewhere, wherever it goes, I'm just going to start. Yeah, one. yeah. I mean, it, at the beginning, it wasn't, it wasn't with the idea that I was going to do this as a career. It was just for me. It was just yeah. writing these little stories and these little snippets. And sometimes it would be, as simple as, as writing down an idea on a napkin somewhere that I remember thinking, oh yeah, that's good, I'll, I'll say that because I wouldn't mind looking into that later on. And then it got to the point <laughs> when, I was a, when I was a kid, I remember um, uh, telling some of my cousins, I've got quite a big family, lots of cousins and whatnot. And I was sat down with some of the younger ones and I just started telling them this story that I came up with. God knows what it was because I can't remember it now. <laughs> but it was entertaining, they liked it. They liked it. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, from that point onwards, it sort of developed into this idea where I thought, you know, what, I can do this as a career. I, it was, originally, I remember thinking I wanted to, to make my own comic books yeah. because mm -hmm. I was so in love with comic books, Spider-Man, the X-Men, that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it, it just sort of all came about over the course of years. Yeah. Um, were there any points in there that you felt, no, I can't do this, or yeah, I'm going to push myself? Were there any sorts of challenges, that oh, you, or did you yeah. just move with it and let, let it flow? Um, you know, actually, the biggest challenges were the, the self-doubt, you know, because you get this idea in your head and you think, when you're sat there writing there, uh, writing it, and, and you, you read it back, you think, wow, you know, that's actually pretty good. That, and then that character go over there, oh, that's really good as well. And what about that? And you, it just starts to build in your head. But then all of a sudden, you've got to get to this point where you say to yourself, I could make this into a film. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then when you start to develop that idea into something bigger, all of a sudden you realise, well, I'm going to need to work with other people. I'm going to need to, to, to kind of tell this idea to other people and, and get them to believe in it the way that I believe in it. Yeah. That was the, the most difficult thing. That's the thing that sort of, um shamefully kept me parked on my bum for so long yeah. when really I could have been starting a lot earlier yeah. you know but yeah. um yeah it's it's one of those things I think everybody must go through it 
mm. where there's this point where you think to yourself enough's enough I've got to get up and I've got to give it a try now and and yeah I started doing that a few years ago and it's, it's worked pretty well so far yeah was there anything in particular that actually got you motivated to take action like it was it obviously you know you did the training and and things like that or was it just you know what I really want to do this and... yeah um a bit of both but yes there was there was one thing in particular I suppose which was um I was out with a friend uh who was also into films also the same sort of thing as me where he's he, you know he's wrote loved to write his own comic books and make these own films and come up with scenes and stuff like that but I would always be the one who's saying, yeah, I'm going to do this at some point. I'm going to do this at some point. And it was sort of off the back of me being sat there with him and thinking to myself, I've got to stop saying I will do it. And I, I have to start doing it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was just off the back of a drunken conversation, really, with someone <laughs> say, getting enough of me sat hearing myself say, yeah, I'm going to do this next year. I'm going to do this next month. Yeah. you just you just got to get up and do it and that that was that was the point for me where I remember thinking right no I'm going to do this now yeah brilliant wow I'm so inspired um and I'm sure <laughs> that you were watching as well I like just getting like you know the hair raising of the arms and everything it's brilliant love it um so kind of fast tracking now into um your short um your your movie the sad little boy mm -hmm. now Talk to us a bit about that. What was the journey to making Sad Little Boy? And tell us a bit about this film. Okay, so Sad Little Boy is um, a drama. It's about a guy who's going through a bit of a bad breakup. And um, I suppose we've all been there in, in that sort of scenario. And when you go through that, as, as this character does, your mind sort of swings from, from one idea to the next idea and then back again. And, and it's, it's a bit of a bit of a sad state for him and he gets to the stage where you know on his own feeling a little bit desperate he, he takes some very silly steps to make someone sorry but um how it came about was because a drama is not the sort of when it comes to stories that i that i write that i come up with dramas are not the, the usual ones so for me to do a drama was especially for my first film it was something that was very um i didn't think would ever happen yeah but it came about because I had done uh, some work with someone. She was a model and she wanted to be an actor. And she, we were friends. We were chatting about all the sort of ideas that I had and whatnot. And basically she said to me, you know what? I want to make a film with you and I want you to write it because, you know, this is the, the dream for me to be an actress. Blah, blah. And um, she said to me, the only thing is I want it to be about something sad. That's, that's more or less it. Uh, so I went off and, and I wrote sad little boy um i did it with a frame of mind thinking that we've got no budget we're going to have no you know th there's not going to be lots of time to, to invest in it so i tried to keep it as small as possible but the idea i think was a good one it worked really really well um unfortunately she couldn't be in it in the end because of uh time constraints but um she she gave me a blessing to to keep making it and i did it with someone else instead and and it yeah it did it did really well i was really really proud of it really pleased it's amazing how things happen right yeah. like in yeah. terms of you know what the purpose was behind it first and then now it's become totally different cast different you know again different point of view and everything yeah yeah, so, yeah. it's almost like she just planted the seed mm. for you and it was like in a way in a way yeah because i would i i absolutely wouldn't have done it unless i had that conversation with her to begin with yeah um and who knows, as much as I've got these great, well, I think I've got these great ideas and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good writer. Um, I may never have got, it may never have got the ball rolling if I hadn't had exactly. that interaction there. Yeah. So yeah, who knows? A bit of synchronicity going on there. Mm. <laughs> so obviously, how did you feel once you completed the film and like, you know, because obviously that was your first yeah. film. How, how was that? in terms of feeling in terms of yeah I've done it yeah. It, was, yeah it was it was a great feeling there was there was loads of points oh Christ there was loads of things that kept going wrong and and I think at the end of the day at the end of every day I felt good because having never done it before you know being a runner on sets and stuff like that you pick up bits and pieces but you still don't know how to direct you don't you don't know how to do that job um so it was very much just picking things up as you go and 
I had to think of my feet. I came up with with ideas there, there and then that, that solved problems. And I was just I was proud of myself. And there was things like there was the DOP on the job, the 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 camera on the job. Um, he was very he was a very blunt person. You know, he didn't mind t- telling you what he thought. And at the uh, at the end of shooting, whichever day, he turned around and said to me, "You know what? You're a pain in the ass, but you've got good ideas." <laughs> Oh, great. And yeah, so things like that, it's like, oh, okay, well, I'll take that. I'm definitely going yeah. in the right direction. I'm doing something quite well. Um, and when I got the job done, I remember with the first rough cut, it took it took me ages to get it right. I was, I was a little bit of a perfectionist about this little scene and that little cut. And um, I sent it to that same friend who I had the drunken conversation with back at whatever point. And, and he, he viewed the rough cut for me and he, he got back to me, he sent me an email and he said, he's never seen a, such a good rough cut in his life. Yeah. And I was sort of blown away. I didn't know what to say. Yeah. Um, but it just, it, every one of those little things gave me that little bit of confidence just to keep going. That's amazing. You know? Because if everybody says to you, yeah, it's all right. Well, yeah, it's not bad. It's not, if, if you have any doubt in yourself, that's not going to help you to be pushed forward so yeah I was, I was thankful that I got what I got yeah no, that's that's good because yeah. you were taking every bit from each connection that you were making and it mm. was almost like it was steering you in your career path almost yeah to go in and keep moving mm. forward yeah 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 Tip. yeah no yeah. definitely <laughs> I love it um do you feel that um part of your journey into filmmaking just having that either it be a small circle or a large circle of that good support do you find that that's really helped throughout your journey so far yes yeah yeah definitely um I won't lie there hasn't been that that many people in that in that circle Ooh, I was yeah, I was a little yeah. bit too shy about my writing and stuff like that so I didn't show a lot of it to anybody for a long long time yeah. and um it sort of built over over like for example those that drunken chit chat that I had with my friend. There was there was many of them. There was a few of them. <laughs> um, and you know when you find out a, a, another person who's got the same sort of interest as you, you you sort of, you just build on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it definitely it definitely helped. We've got the same sort of interest as you, you know, and then bounce ideas off each other, go out and have a drink and talk absolute rubbish about some idea that you've got and it'll progress. It'll get better and better and better. And that's what, that's all you have to do, really. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Brilliant. So tell us about your latest release, The Programme. So The Programme, oh, how would I describe The Programme? It's a bit of a strange one, isn't it? Um, <laughs> very different to Sad Little Boy. Yeah, it is, yeah <laughs> very different. Um, so actually, you know what? I, I had a chat with a film critic um a couple of weeks ago and I asked him so what genre because I haven't really known what genre to put the film in because it is different I've I've never come across anything quite like it before and he said to me he undenied about for a second and then he went to me you know what it's sci-fi it's a sci-fi film and and he's right it is sort of but I would say it's a film that's um (laughs) oh it's a mind-boggling uh, moral conundrum of a film. It's supposed to sort of make you go one way, think of, think one thing, and then pull you in the other direction and question yes. everything that, you, that you're seeing. Um, and as far as the story is concerned, it's it's based off an element of truth, which is you know the, the prisons of the Western world are in trouble in a lot of ways for a lot of different reasons, and um, this film sort of a character comes up with an idea for solving that issue and I've got to be careful now because I don't want to say too much and give yeah. it <laughs> um, um, but it's it's sort of like a, a quite a high cost to pay mm. to make it right and um, that's all I'll say I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. <laughs> but I don't so, want to give too much away there were some characters in there and again without giving too much away that were yeah. based on the element of truth and there were some that were just really I mean obviously when we yeah. watched it they were really kind of like, as well I mean yeah. were some of those like complete different characters that you came up with or were they all kind of parts of elements of where you've seen that in uh, bits oh 
A bit, a bit of both, really, I, in, in every single case, because I did, I did quite a lot of research. So as much as I love films and stories and stuff, like that, I also mm. love my documentaries. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, I watched a, a few documentaries around the prison subject, which got me the idea in the first place. But I, when I went back and did the research, when you're watching these documentaries, and it could be anyone from, from Louis through to, to Ross Kemp to uh, a whole bunch of different American ones, yeah. there would be a character who would say something or do something, or you'd see an expression on their face. And that, in a sense, was sort of like um, my inspiration. I, I would see a character do something, and then I, I suppose my imagination... Uh, would kind of just go nuts with it and say, right, he's feeling that. And why is he feeling that? It's probably because of this. And if he's feeling that because of this, then perhaps there's someone else leaning on him to make him feel like that. And why would that happen? Where would that come from? And all of a sudden I started building these little story arcs for loads of these different little characters. And in, in some cases, it doesn't actually show in the film. When I, when I wrote the script, there was, there was much more um, bigger parts that, that would have been played out, but um, I didn't have the budget for it. Uh, it was, so I, I had to sort of trim it down in places, but yeah. it's certainly a case that I would look at certain things that were real. I would find characters that, that really said some things and really did some things. And then I just let my imagine go with it. And, and uh, yeah, that would be the fictional part that took over. Yeah. Well, I mean, for us watching it, I mean, it was, brilliantly done I think you know again the way you pulled the characters the way it was made yeah. in terms of you know again that's the really documentary style yeah, exactly. yeah exactly so it was yeah brilliantly put together and yeah it seems like it was something that was you know something that you, you this is obviously your second release but it feels like some years and years <laughs> that you've been involved in Definitely. so yeah. amazing I love it thank I mean, you what, what was it like? I mean, just obviously with the actors playing those roles. I mean, what kind of feedback did you get from them? Because they, oh, did. Uh, they really did. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I got some really nice feedback from a, from a few of the, the the actors and whatnot that I work with. There was um there was one actress in the film who flat out term when I when I got in touch with people obviously no one knows me no so they're, they're not gonna it's not like if Steven Spielberg gives them a ring and they just say, yes, of course, I'll do it, no problem. Yeah. Well, when I got in touch with them uh a few people uh I suppose were a bit hesitant yeah and one one actress turned around and said look I'm I, I don't work for free I will not do it for free and I didn't have the budget at that point to to be paying loads of people and I said okay no problem well look I've sent you the script anyway have a little read tell me what you think and it's you know no problem I didn't expect to hear back from her and then a few days later she got in touch with me and said okay I'll do it for free so amazing yeah and it, it's as nice as, as that is that that was a, a big boost as well because that it's like I said before it's those little things that that make you think I'm definitely on the right track I'm doing something right here yeah. and it just it just keeps you going um and obviously yeah the I think I did quite a good job. All the actors and all the cast and crew and everything since then have had really lovely comments and really lovely things that they've said. And it's, it's doing really, really well in the, the film festival circuit and everything. So I'm, I'm over the moon with this. So yeah, very, very pleased. Amazing. Wow. Excellently done. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, and obviously now you've mentioned how well it's been doing in the festival circuit. And recently it's now both Sad Little Boy and the programme are now available to stream on Amazon Prime. How does that feel to yeah. have oh. such a success of uh, of these two? It's only films. your second film. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm over the moon with it. I'm absolutely over the moon with it. I didn't think... When I, so like, you know, you said it's the second film. I thought I would be maybe six films in if I was still going at that point before it would be anything like on Amazon or something like that. And for the fact that it's it's done as well as it has um, and it's on Amazon Prime, even one, I just found another award this morning that it got. So, okay. you know, not to blow my own trumpet or anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm just absolutely over the moon. Really, really am. I'm, very very pleasantly surprised 
Which is great. Do you get that sort of point? I mean, of course, upon hearing the news this morning, as well as the both the films being um, available on Amazon, is there a point where you felt like, wow, this is definitely my calling? Because this is what I'm hearing through this interview so far, that, mm. wow, you were really called to do this, uh, to, to make mm. this career path for your own kind of thing. Yeah. Um... Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm not too sure when it happened, but at some point between now and, and starting the program, probably not so much Sad Little Boy, even though it did really well, yeah. I wasn't, for example, I wasn't confident enough to put it into the film festival circuit. Um, yeah. Which I, I was, uh, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say, to be perfectly honest, because I, I, I had to pay to get it reviewed by someone, but it got fantastic reviews. So if it had gone to the film festival circuit, who knows how it would have done, but... I certainly didn't have the confidence to the stage that I have now. Yeah. And somewhere between making um, the program and, and at this point, I've certainly felt like, right, this is what I'm meant to do with my life. And um, I'm very happy to be doing it as well. Yeah, yeah. So are you currently working on any other new projects or are you actually just focusing on, you know, keep on pushing the program out? No, um, I am, I've been, Oh, I'm always working on other projects, <laughs> always working on other yeah, projects. Yeah. Um, so there's a story that I'm uh, writing a script for at the moment. Um, it's very, very different to the first two. Again, it's a thriller, this one. Um, it's called Promises of Betrayal, or at least that's the, the current working title. Um, and I won't say too much. Oh, Christ, I don't, I don't I know a waffle, so I'm a bit worried I'm about sorry, it. I'll, I'll say this. It's a thriller about someone who is tricked into murder. And right. yeah, uh, and um, I'd say I'm maybe 80 to 90 percent through the script. Excellent. Uh, I'm, I'm really liking it so far. So, yeah, we'll wait and see. Amazing. What keeps you inspired? Mm. Um. It's weird. I find my inspiration in absolutely anything. So it could be when you're standing at a bus stop and you're just, I, I love to people watch. Oh, and I yeah. remember seeing someone at the bus stop, oh, oh, this is going back a bit now. And the expression on this guy's face, and it just made me think, I don't know, it just, it just made me think, where How did you get to that expression? How did you get to that expression? He might have been thinking that, oh, did I leave the oven on at home or something like that? But it, <laughs> it made me think of some sort of, you know, suspense-filled thriller idea that just came from from looking at someone who was standing at a bus stop. Then again, I was watching uh, a different series on on Netflix. You know, it, sometimes you can watch something. It doesn't even have to be a good show. There's plenty yeah. of really good stuff out there, but there's a lot of bad as well. And you can watch a bad one and still, it could still point you in the direction of another idea, which could end up being a good one, you know? So I, yeah. I find my inspiration absolutely anywhere and everywhere. Amazing. Good. I like the fact that your your whole way of doing filmmaking is not boxed up. Yeah. You know, you're open to trying different avenues and yeah. Yeah. which is good. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's always the story. That's the most important part. So um, you know, I've already proved to myself that I can write a, like a drama, for example, yeah. which I never thought I would do. Um and it's, it's just one of those things. I, I love stories. I will always do it. I've always have done it. I always will do it. And if you've got, it, it, I, I always kind of say to myself, that like the, the, I call it the physics of filmmaking. If you take, say, a horror film mm. and you take away all those sections of, of like those scare moments, those shock moments that's supposed to scare the audience, if you take them all away, all you're left with is the story. And if the story doesn't add up, if that scene doesn't made up to this scene, blah, 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 well, then it's not going to work. Yeah. So the basis is make sure the story is right. And then you can add all those bits of shock and horror or action or romance or drama, whatever they need to be. And I, I like to think I'm not, you know, an expert as such. I think I'm doing okay, but I'm not an expert yet. I can always learn more, but I like to think as long as I go in with that sort of frame of mind, it will, it will always end up at least on the the better side of okay yeah. you know and you and you just can you can build from there I guess yeah. I really love that because there you know that the physics of filmmaking for me is almost like the chemistry of that story that resonates with the viewer and you're you're 
yeah, extremely spot on there because all of those bits of hype you can add to it, but if mm, the underlying right, bit's yeah. not there, then, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Excellent, great. Um, so in terms of being in the film industry now and obviously working on your projects, are there any is there anything that you've learned from it or were there certain points that you didn't expect? Uh, yeah, were there any unexpected things that you learned from being from a runner to now making your own films? Yeah, um, I remember working in one particular uh, production house as a runner. I, I sort of went in with the mentality that um, keep your head down, do your grafting yeah. and you'll, you'll work your way to the top. Yeah. You know, I've, I always think of myself as quite having quite a good work ethic and working hard and whatnot, but that's, that's just the way that I thought it would go. Yeah. I remember um, a producer said to me once, quite, someone who was quite high up, you won't, you want to be a director, but you'll never be a director here with that mentality. It won't, it won't work. What you have to do is learn a few of the basics, then leave, do your own thing. And then if you make it, you'll come back as a director. Yeah. And I didn't, I really didn't want to hear that at the time. Mm. I remember, I remember feeling a little bit um, deflated after yeah. he told me that. Um, but it was true. It was absolutely true. Mm. And uh, that was, that was, I suppose, <clears throat> excuse me, that was, I suppose, one of the biggest sort of shocks at the time. And there, there was a few, moments throughout <laughs> more than a few moments throughout like my my running career where it was a bit disheartening things didn't go right I mean don't get me wrong there was, there was plenty of happy times as well it was quite yeah it was a lot of fun but you felt like you weren't you were putting quite a lot of effort in and working very hard for someone and not really getting anywhere yeah um so yeah, I guess um, th there, was, there was a couple of shocks there, but overall I've learned, go out, do it on your own, do it on your own terms as well. Mm -hmm. Don't sort of bend and break for, for other people for what they expect in terms of whether it be timeline, or whether it be story or anything like that. Do it for you mm -hmm. and then see what comes out at the end of it. And uh, yeah, that's, that's more or less what I've learned along the way. I mean, obviously moving on from that, we like to ask our guests to share some tips with those who are interested in the film industry, be that directing, producing or writing. What would be your tips for those that are probably maybe sitting on the fence mm. and not sure as to what to do or even to go into it? OK. Um, broad spectrum wise, across the board, so whether it be producers, writers, directors, um, get out there and make stuff so by that i mean get out there and find other people who want to be doing the same sort of thing whether it be through uh your mates down the pub or whether it be going through some sort of uh facebook chat group or something like that find other people who have got similar interests work together collaborate come up with ideas and then get out there and make it i remember i've seen loads of these um interviews with famous directors where they turn around and said you know, what advice would you give to young directors? And they say, get out there and make something, get out and make something. They're absolutely spot on, true, get out there and make something. But there's, there's a little bit more to add to that, which is don't just go out and shoot something, mm. then put it into your computer and edit it. That might be great for the first time around, but other than that, have a plan. So have a story in your mind. You don't necessarily have to write a script, but have a story, just a, a very simple beginning, middle and end, and then go out and try and shoot that. So don't just go out and do shoot anything. Have a have a, a plan of attack and see if you can follow it. And then, good or bad, you've done something. And once you've done something, you can learn from it. You can build on it. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that's what keeps a lot of people stuck is they feel they have to have almost like that end goal, but it's got to it's got to have some sort of substance before they take the action. So they put a I mean? lot of perfection into the journey, yeah, yes. rather Instead of than taking the action. Yeah. Yes. Just sitting yeah, yeah, thinking yeah, yeah, yeah. about, oh, how can I perfect this before actually, like you said, mm. just go and do it because you'll learn from that experience. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, that's what puts them off. Yeah, and if you, at the end of the day, if you sit there worrying about your journey or worrying about, are you going to look professional at the end of the day? Are you going to come up with something? Well, then you're worrying to the point where you're not doing anything. Yeah. yeah. And if you've got nothing, it's, you know, having nothing is worse than having a bad something. 
because that bad something you can show to people you can get better at and you can progress but the first one yeah no. yeah amazing I kind I really of love it. connect it also yeah. to what that producer said to you about being a runner you know where he said mm. you know do it for a little while stop and go and do your own thing because you can become a like you can be a runner for so many years you know you can yeah. just say okay I'm going to just do this because this is Get the way and do it yeah but you know for the fact that they said stop go and do it it's like almost kind of what you're saying now in a way but not necessarily to a runner yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. true yeah excellent yeah, yeah there's yeah. Right. brilliant thank you so much for sharing these um these nuggets of wisdom the big 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 advice that you've been given is absolutely brilliant and i think those that are looking to be in the film industry whichever industry to be honest yeah. there is this element of a lot of things work similarly you've just got to put all of yourself into it and get something done um yes. yeah that taking action which is brilliant so i mean look moving on now this is a time to plug yourself now anthony where can our viewers find out more about you, about your films, and just, yeah, everything about you? <laughs> uh, oh, about me? I, I don't know. Instagram. Find me on Instagram. That's the best <laughs> thing for it. Uh, DM me, whatever you want. Ask questions. Be happy to answer anybody. But uh, as far as the films go, um, they're both on Amazon Prime at the moment. So either type in my name or, yeah, just go, in, go into the app, find, uh, go to the search bank, type in either my name or either one of the names of the film, Sad Little Boy or the program. They're also going to be in the next coming weeks on Google Play, on Apple TV, and on another website as well called myproduction.co.uk, um, which I'm thrilled about, of, of course. And yeah, the, this script that I'm working on is, is almost finished, and hopefully there'll be more more to come for more to, for people to see i'm sure there will yeah. be absolutely well thank you again yeah, anthony for you. being such an amazing guest on rhyme entertainment showcase viewers stay tuned we've got the trailer of the program coming up shortly take care anthony thank, thank you, you again thank you thank you reporting on the problems of the prison system i believe in good and evil I believe some of the guys in here deserve to be in here and deserve to be punished for what they've done. The UK system is stretched, the US system is stretched, we're maxed out, we're all at breaking point. Some of these guys done horrible, horrible things. But some of them just deserve to be goddamn punished. I have solved the prison crises in the year 2023. That's what I've done. We need this program and we need it now. Kill my father. <laughs> do I look, do I look scared to you? It's not enough for you. I honestly don't know anymore. This is a good thing. We are definitely on the right track. We hope you enjoyed the show. Stay tuned for more Rhyme Entertainment Showcase.